It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special returning guest is Pastor Eddie Turner. Last time you heard us talk about his recent book, Conquering the Chaos in Your Mind, uh, I got to hang out with Eddie when he was taping for Sid Roth, and he was just sharing so many testimonies of how this book, this message is powerfully impacting people. And I said, you have to come back on the show to share with my audience how people's lives are being changed through this message. So, Eddie, I've been looking forward to this conversation. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Sean. What an honor to be back. I love your your podcast, and I'm a, I'm a regular viewer and always exciting guest, and I learn so much. But to be a guest is is quite an honor, and I count it uh, a real privilege. Thank you for the opportunity. Truly my pleasure. And as any of us at Destiny Image would say, it's our honor to do life and ministry with our authors. And so uh, we're always excited to hear uh, what God's doing. You know, we don't always get those testimonies. You know, we're doing all this work behind the scenes to bring a book to market and sell it and all these things. Uh, and it just blesses us when we hear about how the work we do directly contributes to God moving in somebody's life. Uh, but before we get into testimonies, uh, I know in terms of people encountering you, this may be the first time they're meeting you. So I'd, I'd love for you to uh, give us kind of a, a condensed version of your testimony, your origin story. Um, to, to put it lightly, you had a lot of struggles. So talk, talk to us about some sure. of that uh, and how God broke in and really changed your life. Life was good. It was several years, several years ago. My wife and I just had our first child and and life was good. I was pastoring a little bitty church. I was 29 years of age and my my grandmother had had mental uh, challenges. In fact, she died in a mental hospital. Unfortunately, years ago, um, the care for the mentally uh, struggling was not as compassionate as it is today. A lot of times if someone was struggling with nerve disorders, or back then they didn't call it uh, anxiety, they called it uh, nervous breakdowns. And if somebody was struggling with that, they either uh, medicated them to the point of bed, or they put them in a, uh, a mental hospital. The last time I saw my grandmother, uh, she was in a padded cell, and uh, they had put her in a mental hospital. She died a few weeks later in there. And then my aunt struggled as well. And then my dad had his struggles. He never had to go to a mental hospital, but he had his struggles. So I was a, I was familiar growing up with uh, depression, nervous breakdowns, but I never struggled. That was my father's side. My, my mom's side, they were Pentecostal pioneer preachers. And uh, we just prayed everything through and got in the altar and sought God and all those things that old timey. Pentecostal people did, and I didn't have any struggles. I went into the ministry, my wife and I, and then at the age of 29, uh, that thing hit me, and uh, and uh, within three months after I had my first what I call thought attack, uh, I was uh, home ridden. I wouldn't even get out of my home. I was so paranoid and uh, wouldn't even leave my house for almost a year. And during that year, I had some uh, amazing encounters with the Lord. The Lord appeared to me uh, on two occasions and taught me some things about the thought life. And then ever since then, uh, the emphasis of my ministry and life has been helping people who are struggling with anxiety, disorders, depression, oppression, a deliverance, things of that nature. And uh, it just so happens in the last uh, year and a half, the doors have really opened up and uh, I wrote the book, Conquering the Chaos in Your Mind, and it is uh, it has gone global. And, uh, and, and really, the reason why, Sean, is because I just read uh, last week, 40 million adults in the United States of America alone, and I get letters every day from other countries. Uh, about the book and about the uh, TV programs I've been on, but 40 million adults right now in the United States have have identified themselves as struggling with anxiety disorder. 40 million adults. Only one third of those, only 36% of those 40 million have sought any treatment whatsoever. So two thirds of everybody who's struggling with anxiety disorders, they're suffering alone. 
They're really struggling at home. They're struggling at work. They're trying to survive and move forward. And uh, it's, a, it's an epidemic. It's a pandemic right now. I just read last week that uh, 130 people a day in the United States of America get so hopeless that they end their life uh, with some type of self-inflicted harm. 130 people a day just in the United States. I do know, I just read from the University of Michigan, did a study that children between the ages of 12 and 19, uh, the suicide rate has doubled in the last decade. The suicide rate between 12 and 19, that's something we used to never hear about. Uh, with children and young people that have their whole lives to look forward to. Life's exciting. It's fun. And now all of a sudden that hopelessness is starting to, to hit them as well. So we are living, yes, we're living in a pandemic season medically with the coronavirus, but there's a pandemic taking place of anxiety. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, uh, the church has been slow uh, to heal it. The church has not wanted to take care of that. But thank, thank the Lord, uh, we're starting to get on board and starting to let people know there is freedom. Uh, the Word of God does teach us that we can be free from anxiety. We can have sound mind and peace of mind, uh, and we don't have to succumb to fear and torment and harassing racing faults. Well, and Eddie, those are some staggering numbers. Uh, honestly, I hadn't realized that uh, things were that bad. But at the same time, I, I would say it's not surprising, you know, if you have a regular information diet of social media and popular news and uh, and especially for, I mean, not only older folks, but young kids, people who are starting out, uh, it pretty much sounds like the world's over. Everything's hopeless. You should just give up now to sit in your house and and, and be safe. And uh, that, that really is nothing to look forward to, uh, let alone all the catastrophic loss we've experienced on on so many levels. Uh, the last couple of years. But, but the one thing I would say that always encourages me, I feel like God has a divine timing for the assignment of so many of the books and messages that we get to be a part of stewarding. And, you know, on average, a book will take 12 to 18 months from contract to release time. And, you know, if I had a dollar for every time in an interview, I was talking about, you know, it's hard to think of a more divine timing for this message to have released. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say the same thing applies to your book, where you know, I, I I couldn't have picked a better time frame for this message to go out into the world. And uh, Eddie, I'd love to hear just about uh, some of the testimonies. You know, uh, sure. are people emailing you? You know, when they're reading the book, how are they responding? And also tell us some of the things that's happening in your meetings. I know you've been traveling a lot, uh, sharing about the book and who's showing up. How is God moving? Um, what is God doing with this message? Yeah, Sean, it's, I am, uh, my wife and I, Amanda, are just uh, humbled. We are floored. I'm, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for 41 years. And, uh, and then the, uh, the Lord beginning prompting me. And then the people at Harrison House, Destiny Image heard my story and, in, and met with me and sat down, talked with me about the possibilities of writing the book. I'm, I'm not a nationally known author. I, nobody knows me, really. This is my first book. I've kind of stayed to myself, had wonderful ministry all these years, pastoral ministry, had tremendous churches, and I've always taught this. Um, but since the book has been released, there's honestly, uh, Sean, uh, and I'm a pastor, I'm not evangelist. I'm not going to stretch the truth <laughs> uh, to make it sound good. Honestly, every single day, uh, when I wake up, there are emails in my box. There are messages on my phone from people literally around the world. They've heard the story. They saw the Sid Roth interview. Um, they've seen me on uh, various TV markets being interviewed. And people are struggling with anxiety. And these services, uh, every weekend we're going, and I, I tell my story, but I also teach the Word of God how to be free. It's, it's a wonderful thing to hear somebody's story of freedom. That will encourage you. But it's got to, how does it work for you? How do you get free? And that's one of the challenges that we face in the mental health industry. And mental health right now is the buzzword. We just saw it in the Olympics, how a lack of mental health 
uh, really affected some of our greatest athletes. And now they're starting to come out, people, movie stars, uh, uh, people of uh, notoriety, athletes are starting to come out and saying, we're struggling with this. We're struggling with our health mentally. We do not know how to uh, successfully navigate the emotional negativity that we're receiving. And, and you mentioned it a while ago, people, they get so fearful, so they drives them into their home. They, they isolate, and that's exactly what Satan wants to happen. He wants us to isolate so he can work on our minds. Satan is the master. His arena, his battleground is the thought world. Satan operates in the arena of thought. And if he can drive you or me or anyone else into their home, into isolation, into secrecy or hiding because of fear, or anxiety, or racing thoughts, that's exactly where he wants us because we're not getting the proper information that can teach us how to come out of this mental bondage and torment we're in. And everywhere we go, I'll teach, I'll tell my story, how the Lord appeared to me, how he's taught me over these years of the things of the thought life, and then we give opportunity for people to be prayed for. And Sean, can I tell you, after the service is over, if we only pray for people for two hours, uh, that's a short service schedule because people line up. I've had as many as three-fourths of a congregation of 700 have lined up and waited for hours to have hands laid on them because they're in mental torment. We're starting to receive letters and emails daily now of churches using the book, Conquering the Chaos in Your Mind, as a workbook for small groups. Small groups are starting to use it because there's questions in the back of each chapter and discussion questions. They're starting to use it uh, for small group material. Why? Because people are struggling and the medical, we've, we've either gone one or two ways. We've either gone all medical or we've stayed away from it as a church world. But thank God we're starting to uh, breach this subject and talk about it and what the word says, how people are getting free. And every day we're receiving testimonies of people who have read the book, who have put the word to work in their life and are starting to get free, starting to experience some peace that they haven't had in years. And the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic has just heightened that fear. And uh, people, unfortunately, because we, we've we kind of forgotten Sunday school and Bible doctrines and Bible disciplines and Bible study, um, we Satan's caught us here. He's caught us without a knowledge and without a good foundation of the Word of God. But thanks be unto God, people are starting to turn back to the Word. And Sean, the Word still works. If we'll work the word, the word will work. If we'll be a doer of the word, the word will work. Uh, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the Bible speaks a lot about renewing our mind and getting our thought life under control. Uh, that study I referenced a while ago, the University of Michigan, uh, they gave some reasons, some latest reasons why people are struggling with anxiety right now. And the number three reason that they gave, the number three reason, was negative thinking. People are just uh, not aware that they can control their thought life. Sean, the, 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 the thing that turns the light on for so many people is when I teach this point that the Lord taught me, is that you and I do not have to take ownership of every thought that pops in our mind. You and I do not have to take ownership. Most people, when a thought pops in their mind, what Satan does, he'll sit over here on this side of our mind and he'll throw some rogue thought in, some tormenting, terrible, stupid, impure, harassing thought. He'll throw it in our mind because he operates in the arena of thought. And then he'll come around on the other side and whisper in our ear, boy, you're not a very strong Christian or you wouldn't be thinking that. You're a terrible person or you wouldn't be thinking that or something's wrong with you or you wouldn't be thinking that. And the whole time, he's the one that put the thought in. And then he comes around on the other side and makes us feel guilty for thinking the thought. 
And what the Lord taught me through those through this journey is I do not have to take ownership of every thought that pops in my mind. I didn't come up with most of those thoughts, especially those impure, harassing, terrible thoughts. I didn't come up. That's Satan putting those thoughts in my mind, and I have to learn to kick them out, take them captive, and kick them out and take back control of my mind. And Sean, when people learn that simple truth, it's like the light bulb comes on and they realize I don't have to be a recipient of all this junk that's pouring into my mind. I can take authority over it and stop it. And once they have that hope that they can take back control of their thought life, suddenly they start to get free. And that's what we're experiencing. Now, in a lot of our meetings, uh, we're dealing with people who are oppressed in their mind, uh, mentally and emotionally oppressed. Some people have a, mo uh, a mental oppression, emotional oppression because of abuse that they've had as a child. Others are having emotional strain because of self-absorbed harm, maybe drug addiction. Some because of an accident or an injury to their brain. Some are literally dealing with chemical imbalances. All of those things play in on it, but there is a spiritual side of this, of taking our thought life under control and how we do that with the Word of God. And when people learn they can do that, they start to get free. We do have, Sean, we have people, I'll tell them, I'm getting ready to lay hands on you, and you'll get a temporary reprieve here when the anointing of God hits you, and we see it. We see, we've seen uh, demon manifestations, and we've seen people be delivered who've been totally uh, oppressed and possessed. But most of the people we're dealing with are people who they are just tormented at the moment. And when we uh, lay hands on them and pray for them, the anointing goes upon them and they get a temporary reprieve. But you know what the Bible says, Satan will come back for a more opportune season. So he filters back around and you just can't run to a prayer meeting, get somebody to pray for you every time you have a tormenting thought. You have to start getting your mind renewed with the word of God. And that's the hard work. That's the hard work. But when you start doing that, people are starting to get free and they're writing us and letting us know. People who've been in under counsel for years are writing us and say, we finally have hope that we can be free. People who've been on medication for years are starting to say our doctors are telling us we don't need the medication. What has happened to us? And we've just simply told them they are starting. We're starting to put the word of God to work in our life and get our mind free. So it's it's every day's in a different adventure right now, Sean. And it's just fun to see what God's doing. Well, I think that's one of the real sticky kind of things I want people to get a hold of. You know, whether it's in this interview or in your book, is renewing our minds is so so important. Uh, you know, I think a lot of us want to lean into, well, if if the man on the stage just lays hands and prays, uh, prays for me, it's just going to all be fixed in an yeah. instant. And like you said, there there will be some reprieve, there will be some healing, uh, maybe some deliverance. Uh, but at the end of the day, when we go home, if we go back into all those same practices that got us into the state we were in, um, we're, we're basically going right right back to where we were. And so it may look in a ch uh, look like a change in your patterns, a change in your habits. It may look like having a, a going, I guess I might say, go on an information diet. Stop watching the news if that brings you down. Stop watching garbage on TV. Um, pray, get in God's word. You know, um, for lack of a better way to say it, you know, the, the old phrase of garbage in, garbage out. If we put That's junk right. into our mind, that those are the things our mind uh, is going to be focusing on. And so, uh, you know, some of us need to just go home and get rid of the junk and start filling our mind with truth and things that are going to bring us peace and joy and hope. Um, Eddie, I, I, I want to go back. Uh, you, uh, you talked a little bit ago about that. Sometimes when you guys are praying for people, uh, demons are manifesting, people are, are being delivered. I know for a lot of people who are struggling with anxiety and these sorts of issues, many people worry, Oh, do I have a demon? Am, am I being demonically oppressed? And sometimes that is the case, but it's not the case. I feel like often people worry about that beyond the level to which they should. So I'd love for you to just speak about that a little bit in terms of when we're in these difficult places. Um, when, when, you know, is it demonic? Is it not? Like, how do we discern? How do we deal with that? Well, that's, 
that's uh, you've you've hit the nail on the head. One out of every two emails that I get from people who are under some type of a medical care or some type of professional counseling and are being tormented in their mind, over about half of them always um, mention or reference this fault uh, that you're you've got a devil, I've got a devil, I've committed the unpardonable sin. Uh, I'm possessed with a devil. Uh, Satan loves to torment people with that. And and, uh, let me just say, the people that I'm dealing with every day uh, with this and praying for, a very small, small, very small, less than 10% of those have literally are demon-possessed. They are demon-oppressed. Uh, but they are not possessed. Possession is is a usually occurs over a a long extended period of impurity, uh, some type of perversion, uh, giving ourselves over intentionally uh, to uh, satanic things. Um, and most people are not like that. Most people, the vast vast majority of people that I deal with every day, though they thought that. Satan's tried to tell them that they're possessed. See, Satan also always wants to take a place of preeminence in our life that he doesn't have. He always wants to be the king of our life. So if he can convince you that you've got a devil when you don't, you'll act like you do, and he'll usurp that authority when he really doesn't have that type of authority. So most of the people are not possessed, but they are oppressed. They've opened their minds they've received information, they've dwelled upon the negative or the impure, the lustful, the perverted. Uh, And a lot of those things are just flesh-driven and not uh, demonic-driven. So, uh, but you've got to be convinced of that. Satan told me that was the thought that sent me reeling. I was driving down the highway one day. I was pastoring my church, wasn't thinking anything bad that I remember. And all of a sudden, this rogue thought hit me, you're demon-possessed. And it stung me. I thought, where in the world did that come from? I'm not demon-possessed. I'm the pastor. But within three months, that thought, Sean, captured me. And it tormented me to the point that it drove me into paranoia and I wouldn't leave my house. And that's the same thought and the same theme that I deal with people every single day that Satan's trying to convince them that he has them when he doesn't. Uh, and, and so once they realize I'm not possessed, that's a lie of the devil. I'm just oppressed. I'm just being tormented with these thoughts. Satan's sitting out here and he's firing. He's not inside. He's out here firing all this perversion and stuff into my mind. And once they realize that and get a clear picture of that, all of a sudden they can rise up and fight against that onslaught that's come against their mind. Well, Eddie, that's a a helpful perspective. And I would say what you share really fits with many of the conversations I've had. Um, I've been on uh, an interview kick lately of talking to Catholic exorcists, uh, charismatic folks who operate in deliverance ministry. And uh, by and large, you know, people are are worried that they might be demon possessed. But like you said, 80, 90 percent of the time, they, they're often experiencing some form of demonic oppression, um, That's right. but, but the, the case of actual possession tends to be uh, more the exception than the rule. Uh, Eddie, almost time for us to wrap up. The place I'd like us to land this conversation is just uh, having you take a few moments to pray for the viewers and listeners, how, however you feel led. You know, we're, we're touching on the topic of fear and anxiety and hopelessness, and this is uh, just front and center in everybody's minds right now. I feel like the whole, well, let's say the whole country, the whole world is struggling uh, with anxious thoughts and racing mind. And so however the Lord leads you, uh, just speak over the audience. I know it's going to bless us. Thank you, Sean. And if you're uh, watching, listening to us today, and you're one of the 40 million American adults who are struggling with anxiety, with racing thoughts, with panic, Uh, with stress to the point that it's starting to affect your behavior, your train of thought, your concentration, your ability to function during the day in a normal capacity. 
you're not alone. I've been there. I know exactly what you're experiencing. I know that fear. I know that nervousness. I know that tightness in your chest and the strain around the top of your head. I know all of that, the racing thoughts, the volume of the room intensifying. It's all real. And can I tell you something? You're not going crazy. You're not losing your mind. You're not demon possessed. You're not losing it. You're under attack. The same spirit that's caused so many such anguish is trying to jump on you. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And if you'll put the word of God to work and the name of Jesus, you can resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Can I pray for you right now? Lord Jesus, I pray for the people who are watching and listening today. I pray that a spirit of peace and hope will come upon them. Some of them are listening. And they haven't slept good at night for months. Others are dreading the day. Others of them can't turn their minds off. And I pray for them right now that, first of all, a spirit of hope would come upon them. There is an answer. There is a remedy. There is help. The second thing I pray is I rebuke the spirit of fear and torment that's harassing you right now. We call you out, you spirit of fear and torment. We call you for who you are. You are a liar, deceptive, and your power is limited. And we take authority over you in Jesus' name. And we pray that these precious people will start to receive, see, and walk in the truth of God's word to be free. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for that, Eddie. And Eddie, for the listeners, the viewers who'd like to connect with you, get their own copy of the book, see where you're going to be speaking, where do we connect with you on the web? Yeah, it's www.pastoreddieturner.com. It's got my schedule. I'm out uh, uh, at least three weekends out of the month. I'm located in Cookville, Tennessee at Life Church. I'm the teaching pastor here and work with people. We have people drive in. I just had a lady drive in uh, seven hours the other day just to get ministry when she read the book. And uh, so we we do email ministry. We do uh, phone calls. We meet people. And then I'm out traveling on the weekends. Uh, so uh, and get the book on the website or Amazon. And uh, Sean, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for your ministry. I want to thank you for getting the word out. And uh, I just I'm honored to be a, a guest today. Well, Eddie, like I said earlier, it's, it's truly our honor. We love that we get to partner with you and and just be a part of releasing a message that is impacting the hearts and minds of people who are struggling in the midst of hopelessness right now. Uh, like we do with every episode, we'll have links in the show notes, uh, links to Eddie's website, places where you can buy the book, all the things you need so you can really get a hold of this message and have it change your life as well. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabot Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Eddie Turner. Once again, Eddie's book is Conquering the Chaos in Your Mind, Finding Freedom from Tormenting and Anxious Thoughts. And Eddie, I just want to say thank you so much for pouring into us today. I know it's going to bless a lot of people, and I truly appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. God bless.